Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to class. Let's uh, begin today's session with a word of prayer. I want to request uh, one of us on the call to kindly go ahead and lead in prayer, please. Lord, I thank you for this day. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for this time that we have uh, here that we can uh, come together to uh, to study and uh, to hear um, and to also uh, uh, get, gain the knowledge, the Father God, of how to um, overcome the devil, how to overcome the enemy. And uh, Jesus, I pray that um, you will help us to come to you uh, seeking for strength and help and that uh, you'll help us to overcome all things and that you're always with us. Thank you, the Father God, that you were there with us as we study together. In the name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rin. Um, so as we have seen, we have uh, an active enemy. Uh, but God has also given us the things we need to be able to face this enemy, to overcome this enemy. And the fact is that he is already defeated. So in the last class, we talked about maintaining a lifestyle that will help us keep the devil out, keep his works out of our lives. So we said that, you know, as long as we are walking in our place of um, uh, intimacy with the Lord, as long as we uh, have taken up our position of uh, responsibility, the commission that God has given us uh, in God's presence, that's already a safe place. You know, the enemy can't come and uh, uh, try to derail us from God's plan for our lives. But in addition to that, we talked about the importance of um, things like faith, prayer intercession fasting so all of this puts us in a better place you know uh, and uh, we um, uh, can overcome because it's the practice of the enemy to keep uh, shooting fiery darts on us but we can quench it all if we uh, we keep ourselves you know in in this particular place so uh, we can grow in these things we can develop these things in our daily lives and um, you know we uh, really walk victorious as we take uh, these things seriously so today just along the same lines we will talk some more about overcoming the enemy um, and uh, how to really stand our ground against uh, the evil one that's the whole point so uh, chapter 10 here uh, it talks about a couple of things that we can continue to use against the enemy one is weapons because it's warfare you understand like it's definitely warfare the enemy tries to come against us he's defeated but since he has some more time here on the earth he will do everything in his power to uh, bring us down and so sometimes we have to engage we maintain a, a position of prayer and intimacy and you know taking up our calling and all but we also have to use other things that god has given us against the devil and so we will see today all the if you want to call them tools or weapons or opportunities uh, that god has given us against the enemy we can understand it and we can put to use so in second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5 when we read about uh, you know the enemy attacking our minds the uh, word of god says that we have not the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty uh, in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So God gives us spiritual weapons because we are fighting a spiritual enemy. We cannot use, you know, your daily weaponry, something you just take and you throw at the devil and he'll run away uh, or, or, you know, you use your uh, uh, gadgets which you use for security in the natural those gadgets don't work so uh, the bible tells us that there are spiritual weapons for you know our weapons they are not carnal but they are mighty uh, in god for the pulling down of strongholds so there are spiritual weapons which we have been given these are powerful weapons against the enemy if we want to um enforce victory why are we saying enforce victory we are saying enforce victory because victory is already ours 
we already have victory we just have to put it in action or put it in place against the devil so are we fighting for victory are we still fighting for victory what do you think as believers uh, has jesus called us okay now you go you fight uh, you become you get the victory is, is that what jesus is asking us to do no okay so i see that answer on on our uh, chat here no uh, jesus has already won the victory for us so we already have the victory so now our task is actually simpler and that's why we are using the term enforce so everything that we are going through we have to recognize i'm already victorious i just have to enforce or put it into action this victory that god has given me and for that god has also given us these tools or weapons which we can use so these weapons they can be weapons which are used to attack the devil remember last class we said we talked about the sword of the spirit so you take you go offensive on the devil or they can be used to defend ourselves the enemy is attacking how do i protect myself things like the shield of faith we said when i hold up the shield of faith when i'm walking in faith no matter what the enemy tries to do it can't really pierce me it can't get to me so we can both defend as well as or go on the offensive or attack the enemy so what are these tools what are these weapons which we have been given so we we'll look at each one of them one by one first of course is the armor of god the armor of god is talked about in ephesians chapter 6 and it has parts to it uh, so there is a comparison of the roman armor uh, of those times to what the believer needs to have in place to overcome the enemy so in the spiritual sense what is our what are the parts of our armor so every believer every believer uh, should have uh, it says righteousness remember we uh, see the breastplate of righteousness there and i explained also in the last class that simply means that i am already established in the reality that i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am sanctified justified made holy uh, and you know no longer does god look at me as an enemy but i am a child of god i am a friend of god so that is putting on the breastplate of righteousness when i'm walking with that understanding the enemy cannot easily get me and the other uh, uh, understanding of the breastplate of righteousness is to walk in righteousness so when i'm walking in integrity when i'm walking in integrity of thought integrity of speech integrity of actions deeds then that's also a safe place and the enemy cannot uh, uh, get in easily so then we also have the belt of truth i know we talked about that also to walk in the truth to be grounded in the truth of god's word right so then what happens then uh, uh, all this is protecting me when i am in warfare i am protected from the attacks of the devil readiness to share the gospel salvation helmet of salvation it protects us faith as a shield uh, protects us then god's word you know as a, a sword it protects us so in uh, uh, ephesians 6 and verse 10 the uh, paul paul says he says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so we are being called to be strong so you can imagine yourself i can imagine myself as a warrior as a soldier a soldier of god in the battle of life and uh, we have the armor we have put on the armor and we are standing strong and you know he says this is how you should see yourself put on everything walk in these things believe these things and be strong what is the meaning of be strong be empowered increase in strength right uh, in in these things and uh, in the power of his might power of his might is the ability of god to work out everything for us the ability um, the might or the force of god so then when i am strong in 
these things, God's power also becomes strong in me. So that's how we understand this. I stand strongly with the armor on and God's power also becomes strong in me and I'm able to overcome the enemy. So that is about the armor. I can use the armor to stay protected against the enemy. Now, coming back to other things which we can continue to use as weapons um, uh, in our fight against the devil, we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have listed out faith again. Faith is already in the armor. I agree. Um, but you cannot overemphasize faith. It's that important. When a child of God uh, is walking in faith, where did where does the enemy come to attack us? Usually in our minds, and his ways of uh, getting us is doubts, accusation, confusion. Generally happens in our minds. So when one has the word of God dwelling in the mind, in the heart, has a renewed mind. Faith is a very active. Faith is strong in that person's life. So it becomes difficult for the enemy to uh, get us. So faith is another weapon. Use it. Use it. We said shield of faith, right? Hold it up every day. Make sure our faith, especially uh, in the battles that we may have. Like now we said that each of us know our own areas of weakness. Uh, so if my area of weakness is uh, my identity as a child of God, and every time Satan attacks me in my mind and makes me feel that I'm not worthy, that uh, I'm not blessed, I'm not accepted, then I have to fight it. I have to battle it out. So I build faith in the area of my identity. Then what happens? I can overcome the enemy. So depending on even the... Um, things of concern in our own lives. I can build faith in that specific area. So if I'm battling weaknesses of the flesh, I have to build faith in that area. So, you know, maybe lust, I'm battling that. So I build faith. I read the word. I meditate the word. I strengthen myself. So as faith is being built up in that area, when the enemy comes lying, I can easily overcome. Or let's say I'm going through a season of sickness and I'm really uh, you know, uh, in almost being pushed to a place to doubt God or question God. But when I am in a place of faith, I'm meditating the word, I'm praying that word through, what happens? I'm actually strong. Though I'm going through a seemingly discouraging phase, uh, I know that God will come through, his word will come through. So that's how it's, it's sort of like, you know, this enemy cannot penetrate when one is keeping themselves in faith. So faith becomes a weapon. Use it as a weapon against the devil. A word of God, yes, we have already discussed that. You know, word of God is so powerful. And Jesus also used the word of God as a weapon. And rightly, it is spoken of as the sword of the spirit. So with the sword, what do we do? You know, we, we damage the enemy. We cut, uh, you know, we uh, uh, attack the enemy. So the word will demolish the lies of Satan. So we can use the word as a weapon. And that's what Jesus did during the temptation. You know, he kept saying uh, the word of God, uh, like it is written, it is written. And, uh, you know, he went and proceeded ahead and overcame the lies of the devil. So the word of God. Uh, one beautiful thing about the word is, we can listen to the word. We can also put the word in our hearts. So when we read Proverbs chapter 4, it says, incline your ears uh, to the word and uh, to my sayings. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So the word of God can dwell in our hearts. Okay, And that is a benefit for us because we can use it anytime. So we have uh, some passages here in our notes, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 14, where basically what it says is, the word of God is near you. It is in your heart. It is in your mouth. And you can use it. I can use it. So uh, we don't even have to 
wait to let's say call the pastor i'm going through all this confusion in my mind okay call the pastor call the counselor you don't even have to wait to reach out to someone where is the word the word is in your heart the word is in your mouth we go ahead and speak it and we will see the fruit of it and in, in fact in the book of revelation uh, we see that when jesus you know speaks his his tongue his words right like his words are revealed as the sword in the book of revelation because it's the word that he will speak which will destroy the enemies enemy uh, nations and the enemy camps so that is the power of the word of god so when i'm battling as a believer it's so so important to use the word if i don't know what the word of god says about a particular matter then in, the enemy can easily get that believer and that's why growing people in the word helping people know what does the word say uh, about identity healing deliverance purity it's so very important and when the word is there we can enforce the victory easier faster so keep the word in our hearts now the other weapon which we can use is the truth about the blood of jesus what has the blood of jesus done for us we read in uh, revelation 12 verse 11 they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and did not love their lives unto death so how did the believers overcome the devil satan adversary enemy through the blood we overcome the devil by the blood when we mention the work of the blood so what is the work of the blood what is the uh, work that uh, blood in general when we read about it in leviticus chapter 17 we know that life is in the blood so that is why blood is so important uh, even in so in in all so many cultures in the world around people know uh, about blood and blood people even go to the extent of blood sacrifices and things like that because somewhere there is that innate knowing of the importance of the blood when one loses blood you know life is going out of that person uh, and so even in the bible uh, in, Le in leviticus 17 11 it, it says that life is in the blood and uh, how beautiful that god gave his only son that he would shed his blood to redeem us his blood to cleanse us his blood to protect us so when we look at what the blood of jesus they overcame him by the blood of the lamb meaning they understood and they made a declaration of what the blood of jesus has done for us so what does the enemy do he'll come with lies his lies will say you're not forgiven you are uh, uh, condemned but what has the blood done the blood has cleansed us the blood is what washes us isn't it he washes us by the blood of the lamb we see that in uh, uh, 1 john chapter 1 verse 7 revelation 1 verse 5 so the truth is the blood has washed me so satan don't lie to me i'm already washed i'm cleansed so the cleansing of the blood you declare it no the blood has cleansed me so satan might come to us with lies and say you know god is still angry with you you are an enemy of god so we speak of what the blood has done for us we know that we are justified by the blood i'm not quoting all the scriptures it's all in your notes uh, but you see that so i speak the truth against the lie and that is how you defeat the devil no the blood has justified me no the blood has reconciled me the blood has brought me near to god the blood has given me boldness to enter into the holy of uh, holies the blood is what sealed the new covenant which i have with god you know, the blood is what has sanctified me the blood has redeemed me the blood has purchased the church of the lord jesus christ the blood cleanses me from a dead conscience uh, from my conscience from dead works 
the blood has redeemed me from a vain way of living so you see that there are all these uh, realities of what the blood of jesus has done for us so each time the enemy comes with any lie you know some lie where he says that no uh, god is not hearing your prayers but you see even in the old covenant what did they do they had the ark of the covenant they had the mercy seat and they put the representative blood of animals on that mercy seat and god would come and meet with them so we can tell the devil the blood of jesus is on my life so god meets with me god communes with me i am not far away from god god hears my prayer god answers my prayer so what is happening it's a battle isn't it you can sense the battle satan is saying something we are saying something else so we are using our weapons we are using our weapons of warfare our armor we are using faith uh, we are using the word we are using the the full capacity of the blood of jesus and we are revealing to the devil that no you are you are speaking lies and i stand on what the blood has done for me the blood has given me white robes right it has cleansed me i am clean before the lord my communion with the lord is uh, uh, established so in this way we can fight the devil okay so are you all okay are you all getting what i'm trying to say or is it a little off i hope you can hear me okay great all right thank you so much thank you okay let's uh, continue then let's look at a few more um, weapons or tools we can use against the devil so notice i said uh, in the last class earlier when uh, adam and eve were in communion with god right they were in communion already they were in obedience they were in submission uh, they were in the garden so when sin had not come to the world god never gave them armor blood of jesus you know weapons no need so just that place of intimacy with god is in itself it protects us from satan it keeps us stronger we are victorious we are walking victorious because every day what's happening we are walking in intimacy with the lord so intimacy in itself is very powerful it will protect us but once sin came into the world that's when all these weapons came into the picture god said okay extra let me give you take the armor take the word you know take the uh, uh, shield of faith the blood of jesus and now the name of jesus so now we have all these additional uh weapons that we can use to enforce our victory so how does the enemy come against us you know, he he will come uh with mind games he will come we said with the, his tactics of intrusion uh of uh, violation right so he comes he attacks so i in those moments i have to rise up and say no devil i'm already victor you can't do this basically what are we we are like those constables or those policemen who are we know the boundary you can't beyond this you cannot so then i start using my weapons against him you know i speak what the blood has done i can use the name of jesus that's the next weapon so the name of jesus talks about the authority of jesus so when i say in the name of jesus what am i doing i am enforcing the authority of who jesus is who is jesus we know that he is highly exalted he is the son of god uh, and the and the bible says in hebrews 1 verse 4 that name right the name of jesus it's a more excellent name we won't find any other name uh, in in this world in the heavens nowhere which is greater than the name of jesus so when i say in the name of jesus what am i doing i'm using the greatest name that ever existed going to exist uh, uh, you know uh, in in god's eyes and so it's the most excellent name that nobody has not even the angels not even heavenly beings so it's the most excellent name that i'm using 
which is talking about Jesus. It is a worthy and an honorable name, you know, as uh, the Bible reveals in the book of James, James 2 verse 7. Uh, it's a name which is above all names as the book of uh, Philippians reveals in chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. So I'm using the highest and the best name that refers to the Lord Jesus himself. So it's so powerful. The greatest name I'm using against the devil. I come against you in the name of Jesus the greatest name ever, the most powerful name ever. Uh, why is this name so great? You know, as we study about Jesus, about the life of Jesus, we recognize, firstly, uh, he's the son of God by inheritance. He is part of the Trinity. He's the second person uh, of the Godhead. So already he's great because he's God, he's deity. That's why his name is so great. But as we look at the person that he is and what he has done, we see that he chose to become a man. So in Philippians 2, it talks about his humility. He gave up his, uh, you know, his glory of heaven and he was willing to humble himself to be a man. And that increases his greatness. And that is why God has given him a name above every other name. So it's also his humility. It's the fact that he obeyed God, that he became a man. Uh, he uh, took up the mandate of uh, our redemption uh, from the Father. He represented uh, mankind. Uh, he died for the sins of the entire human race. Uh, he was victorious over Satan. He rose up from the dead because there was no sin in his life. As we study the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, it says that, uh, he never sinned. He was blameless. Uh, though he lived as a human being, he never sinned. And which is why death could not hold him, right? Death could not keep him. So that is the greatness of our Lord Jesus by inheritance and by actions, by character, by virtue, by action, uh, by obedience, everything, you know, he has become great. And uh, now where is he? We know that he is seated at the highest place uh, in the heavens. He's seated at the right hand of the father. And then he'll come back. He'll come back one day to rule and reign and everything will be on his shoulders. So uh, I'm just trying to awaken us to the fact that when we use the name of Jesus, it's referring to all this, such a great name such a great person right uh, he he is above all he is the king of kings the lord of lords so when i'm using the name of jesus against the devil i'm actually talking about jesus i'm actually like you know throwing it out there on the basis of this person of the godhead I'm com coming against you, Satan. And the name of Jesus, it's given as a weapon to us because whenever you know we speak of the name of Jesus, the Bible also says there is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. You know, prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, when you lay hands in my name, uh, you you people will be healed. You'll cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Miracles take place in the name of Jesus. There is authority in the name of Jesus. Every time, you know, we come together as two or three in the name of Jesus, what does the Bible say? We will experience his presence. So, uh, you know, his name is a mighty name. It's a powerful name. So as I take the name of Jesus, especially against the devil, I can be assured that it's a, it's a weapon. You know, it's demolishing, it's destroying the works, the attacks, the schemes, the plots, whatever the enemy is trying to raise up against me, raising up a weapon against a child of God. Okay, come on, let's go with the name of Jesus, the authority of the name of Jesus. Devil, you cannot get me because, you know, this name is the most powerful name and I'm coming uh, against you with the authority of the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the uh, name of Jesus, I think I've shared this uh, earlier as well, also is like the, you know, we, we equate it with the power of attorney. So when uh, 
somebody gives us makes us a representative for them uh, that's uh, in legal terms you know we they do that with the power of attorney so it's as if that person is operating uh, through us so that is what the power of attorney means and so when i use the name of jesus uh, it's as if jesus himself is is uh, you know face to face with the devil so when i when i let's say cast out a demon and i cast it out in the name of jesus what's happening it's like jesus telling the demon come out i am standing but who is actually operating christ is operating through me so that's how the power of attorney uh, is understood it's it's like saying yes jesus has sent me but it's as if jesus himself is speaking to the demons it's as if jesus himself is uh, you know uh, getting things moving and the action is uh, is happening uh, because i am a representative on behalf of the lord jesus and i have the, the power of attorney so with that name right we can we can uh, use the authority of the kingdom uh, and god says use my name just use my name and that is a weapon against the devil so that is how we understand the name of jesus as a tool or a weapon now coming to the next tool here it is the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit and uh, especially in deliverance when uh, you know uh, we are fighting the devil the holy spirit power is very important you know at a time when jesus cast out a demon spirit in matthew chapter 12 verse 28 he said that i did it by the spirit of god he was being questioned how did you do it how did you do it did you do it by uh, uh, beelzebub uh, one of the demonic uh, uh, powers how did you do it so he gives the answer he says you know what i overcame the devil i cast out the devil by the spirit of god by the working of the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit of God, when we bring in the power of the Spirit, we invite the power of the Spirit, uh, when we create that space right, for the Holy Spirit in our lives, how do we do that? We do that by you know uh, the word we do that by prayer we do that by by increasing the anointing uh, on our lives what happens the spirit of god is at work okay and when the spirit of god is at work obviously satan cannot stand satan is already defeated but then he has to accept his defeat and he has to retreat when the power of the spirit is demonstrated and so you know the power of the spirit is another weapon which we can use against the devil uh, now we know that the spirit of god carries the power of god to break um, in uh, isaiah 10 27 it says yoke and the anointing will destroy the yoke what is a yoke yoke is uh, what satan does yoke is bondage yoke is um, you know if you want to look at it as uh, chains yoke is slavery yoke is uh, uh, you know sort of a forced uh, oppression pressure that satan puts on on people but what does the bible say the bible says the anointing shall destroy the yoke or the work of the holy spirit so when the spirit is operational through my life right what happens bondages are being broken people are being set free deliverance is coming demons are leaving uh, you know strongholds are being uprooted they are being removed off of people's minds so all these powerful and mighty things take place when the spirit the holy spirit is operational so how do we go against the enemy we must pray and we must ask god god uh let the holy spirit dwell in me oh god uh, lord let the anointing of the spirit increase over my life oh god and uh, lord when i go to minister let me not do it you know in my own strength not by power nor by might but by the spirit so you know we we try to make make space i'm just using that uh, phrase but i i don't know if it's technically correct but uh, allow the spirit allow the spirit to work it becomes a weapon in our hands 
when the when the holy spirit is releasing himself mightily then things of the kingdom of darkness will start breaking okay so that's a weapon we can use always be empowered uh, yesterday in our prayer time we prayed uh, if you all recall lord fill me with your spirit fill me with your spirit so we desire the more we are filled with the spirit the more we walk in the anointing of the spirit we'll see uh, the the uh, you know the retreat of the devil he has to move out there's no other way you know demons have to run away because of the power of the holy spirit so that is another weapon which we can use against the enemy and the uh, next and it's the last weapon here in our notes uh, which is the proclamation of his praises so when we praise god that also becomes a weapon so i want us to read uh, these passages uh, psalm 8 and verse 3 if one of us can read it that will be nice another person can read psalm 149 verses 5 through 9 please so two two uh, passages psalm 8 verse 3 psalm 149 verses 5 through 9 we'll read it and then we'll talk a little bit about the praises Can you all just to read it? Okay, kindly unmute in case you're reading. Yes, uh, Jackie, you want to read? Yeah, I took one Psalm one forty five five to nine. Is it okay? Ah, uh, yeah, you can read. It's Psalm one forty nine. One forty nine. Yeah. Then the next person who was reading can do Psalm eight. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. to bind their kings with fetters their nobles with shackles of iron to carry out the sentence written against them this is the glory of all his saints praise the lord amen thank you uh, jackin that's uh, an amazing uh, passage right there i'm just trying to see uh, what an easier version says sorry i didn't look it up uh, before the other version okay the one that i read was niv niv okay okay sure 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 so i i mean it's already like a war language so that's uh, understandable uh, but i thought maybe something simpler okay i'll just do the message version just to see i wanted the passion translation but it's not available here ha uh-huh. so the message version from verses 5 through 9 it says let true lovers break out in praise sing out from whenever they are sitting wherever they are sitting shout the high praises of god brandish their swords in the wild sword dance uh, uh portent of vengeance on the god defying nations a signal that punishments coming uh, their kings chained and hauled off to jail their leaders behind bars for good the judgment on them carried out to the letter and all who love god in the seat of honor hallelujah so okay so it does uh, in a simpler way it puts it things like kings are chained hauled off to jail sent to jail leaders put behind bars um, so what does praise do what does praise actually do so it's very interesting uh, that god is saying when we praise uh, what is praise now uh, you can ask that question praise is when we are exalting acknowledging uh, the characteristics of god and we are um, 
we are declaring it also we are saying god you're good your love endures forever um or uh, your 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 faithfulness is is great uh, lord you you are majestic you're glorious you're holy you're... so the praises of god what happens when i'm praising god we saw all that war language isn't it where people are bound and uh, the enemies uh, defeated so in the spiritual realm whether we can uh, we can grasp it or not war is happening when we are praising that's what the bible says so at times we could just be praising and things will change we have good examples in a, in the uh, bible when jehoshaphat you know he went into battle what did god ask him to do just praise you know when they praised uh the enemy they set ambush against one another and the enemy uh automatically defeated themselves uh and similarly you know when when there is praise you talk about people like uh, paul and silas they are in the midnight hour they are in the prison okay what a time what a difficult time one is in the prison uh i always wonder what is there to sing about when you're in the prison when uh, everything has gone wrong right but we read paul and silas okay that's why the bible also says sacrifice of praise sometimes we don't feel like it we don't feel like praising god but we do it anyway so they are praising god they are singing hymns to god what do we read we read that you know the chains were broken the shackles were broken they were set free not only them praise had an impact on the people around them that uh, everyone in the prison was set free something supernatural took place when they were praising god so the bible has so much to say about praises and we are all familiar you know that one song which uh, uh, was uh, became popular in the recent years i raise a hallelujah right uh, in in the midst of my enemies i raise a hallelujah what are we doing we are do we are uh, going according to psalm 149 when we are praising god automatically the enemy is getting defeated in the spiritual realm so that's how it works and uh, that's what the bible is saying so now that we are talking about overcoming the devil okay using our weapons sometimes praise is the best weapon that you and i can use we don't feel like we don't feel like singing we don't feel like you know acknowledging god's goodness but those are the times as you lift up a praise to the lord and you say god i praise you i thank you you know and uh, even when we are singing we may be singing uh, unto the lord uh, what happens in the spiritual realm war is taking place we are speaking judgment on the devil so we are enforcing our victory it's just so so powerful okay let's move on uh, um, uh, psalm 8 verse 3 please would anyone have that open psalm 145 verse no, no. Uh, that is over we can do psalm 8 verse 3 when i consider your heavens can you hear me yes yes uh, nina when i consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set in place do i continue or is it that uh just a moment uh you said 83 right so yeah once again good i hope the reference is correct here it too sorry to a two Yeah. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Mm. Okay, so uh, it's quite self-explanatory that uh, God has put praise even in the mouth of babes. It says, right? So even in the mouth of babes, uh, to do what? To uh, execute vengeance. on the enemy to silence the enemy and the avenger who is the enemy who is the avenger satan even out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants so that's so encouraging to know that uh, whether it is uh, little children who are singing to the lord or uh, uh, you know young believers they are just fresh in the kingdom of god they are born again and now they're learning uh, things in the kingdom of god whoever it is 
when praise is on our lips when we have a praising uh, you know we, we have praising lips what is happening we are executing judgment we are executing judgment on the devil and satan is very scared of praise uh, and uh, that is the power of praise so use praise so today we uh, talked about uh, weapons which we can use against the enemy we said we can have the armor of god which will protect us and there are also offensive uh, parts of the armor which we can use against the devil we talked about the importance of faith you know faith will keep us unshakable uh even if the enemy attacks us we talked about the importance of the word of god be full of the word be full of the word then uh it's easy we can enforce our victory we talked about the importance uh, of the blood of jesus and the understanding i need to get understanding what is the blood done for me when a person has understanding of the blood of jesus then again you know we overcome the devil then we have understanding about the name of jesus who oh, this is so uh, i mean what is the authority of the name of jesus use it use it satan i come against you in the name of jesus and he has to uh, flee from us the power of the holy spirit when we are increasing in the might of the spirit in our lives when uh, the work of the holy spirit is increasing in our lives it becomes very powerful and satan is defeated and finally we looked at the fact that uh, proclaiming the praises of god is also very powerful so you know we really thank god that um, he's already given us the victory and he wants us to walk in victory as we use these weapons so i'm just reading a comment here from uh, jackin uh, she says the bible also says give thanks in all circumstances so singing praises um, uh, is we magnifying god for who he is so uh, are these two different or we just have to thank him for who he is and what he's done for us in spite of the situations we are going through so yes jack and i mean technically you are right uh, the difference between thanking god and praising god where you are exalting or magnifying him so that would technically mean praise uh, so yes but i'm just saying you know uh, without really going so much into the technicalities uh, but to just lift up our god and and uh, lift up his name lift up who he is to us that is powerful in itself so i hope uh, that's okay okay sure uh, did did someone raise your hand did anyone want to say something all right so um, yeah Uh, we just thank god for what we have learned and uh, we pray that we are able to apply this in our day to day lives and see victory uh, okay no problem uh, so would anyone like to add to what we have uh, talked about if not we can just pray today and ask the lord maybe somebody can pray in the class earnestly and say god everything that that we have learned please help us lord we want to use every weapon and uh, we want to defeat the devil okay so let's uh, just go ahead and pray then uh, could somebody lead in prayer Father God, thank you, Lord, for all that you have taught us from your word, Father God. Father, you want us to be overcomers. Than us, Lord God, you desire us to be overcomers, Lord, and that is why you fought this uh, victory on the cross for each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, you took the price, Lord. Father, fill us with your word. Give us the knowledge and the revelation, Father God, that as we walk through the situations in our daily lives, Father, that we will use all the weapons that you've given us, Lord. Your word, the faith that you. 
you've instilled in us that the Holy Spirit, we'll trust in the Holy Spirit, Lord. And by the power of your word, Lord, we will overcome everything that comes our way. Father, you have equipped us with in every way, Father God. Father, help us, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, every minute, Lord, to have this consciousness, Lord, that we are yours, Father God. No matter what, you will not give us up, Father God. Help us, Lord, to be careful of our ways, trusting in you and always, Lord, in the power of your might, have victory in our lives, Lord, so that we can be a blessing to many others. And also, Lord, in you, we can have a relationship that grows and grows, Father, that we'll become more like you, Father God, and we will live for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us that you have chosen us to, Lord, uh, chosen us, Lord, to learn from your word. Thank you for this blessed time. In Jesus' mighty, matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, each one, for uh, uh, being a part of this class today. And I really pray that uh, we are able to practically apply whatever we have learned. So God bless you. And uh, we shall connect on the next call. I know that uh, the online students will join me. The Bible College students have some, uh, I mean, the on-campus students have a, a mission trip that will happen, but we will still have the class. And uh, uh, so please do join and connect on Friday as well. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye for now. Thank you.